Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. I am here today to do my Friday Reads video where I wrap up the weekend reading and any bookish things that happened. I am wearing an effin' birds t-shirt today. It seems appropriate. Feminism is for everyone. I'm not going to say the last word. I'll just let you read it. Given things that have been going on in the world right now, Effin' Birds was doing a fundraiser with Threadless. So if you bought Effin' Birds merchandise, specifically this t-shirt, they would donate some of the proceeds to two different abortion funds. I cannot remember the names of them, but Joel got the t-shirt in one color, I got it in purple, and I love it. <laughs> I'm not going to spend a lot of time on things other than the actual Friday Reads this week because, I don't know, for whatever reason today I've been thinking about Guinness a lot and that's kind of been make, just making me sad. Uh, and I'm not looking for sympathy or anything like that, just I don't see any reason not to mention that. I almost didn't want to film a video at all today, but I'm going to do it. So this might not be my best Friday Reads, but I did finish three books this week and I am most of the way through another one and I had started another one so there is a lot of stuff to talk about so I'm going to try to push my gloomies to the side and uh, do this Friday Reads video. The only thing I'll mention really quickly is that I've had a couple of co comments on my video about what is the, the great American novel which I will link down below to talk about how interesting it is that other countries don't have this same concern about trying to define what is their best or most definitive book. And it's interesting because America, as a sort of newer country, was very much trying to legitimize itself on a world stage, and the great American novel is definitely an outgrowth of that. And I hadn't mentioned that in the video, but I, so I appreciate other people bringing that into the conversation. I did my beloved deep dive and posted that on Sunday. I'll put a link to that down below if you haven't checked it out. Uh, and I talked about some books that are coming out later this year that I am also looking forward to. That will be down below if you haven't already seen it. And I did my July book haul revisit. That will also be down below if you'd like to check it out. Let's just get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video because again, I think that's going to be the easiest way for me to just get this video in and do it. So the first book that I finished this week is something I had not mentioned at all because I didn't have it yet. It's Our Colors by Gingoro Tagame, translated by Anne Ishii. If you follow along, you know that I was a huge fan of the two volumes of My Brother's Husband by Gingoro Tagame when I read them, I think, two years ago at this point. What is time? And... I didn't know if there was ever going to be another work by Gingoro Tagami. If you look up his work, he mostly does erotica illustrations and comics. He's basically the Japanese Tom of Finland. They're very into BDSM, so if that's not your thing, do not Google it. I'll just, I'll just give you that warning. But that's what he does primarily. My Brother's Husband is a really sweet and tender story about... A brother who had been estranged from his twin brother who had was gay and died and the dead brother's husband shows up to try to get to know the family that he had never met before and it's a really sweet story so I've when I heard that there was another book in that same vein by Gengoro Tagame I immediately called Montana Book Company and ordered it it had just been released it's fun it's a heavy book I will say that even for it being a large hardcover. It's kind of textbook size, but it feels heavy, <laughs> which if that is a concern for you, just know that uh, if you don't like holding big, heavy books, it is definitely a heavy book. So this is described as a coming out story, and it is, but interestingly, the protagonist of the book, whose name is Sora, is described as, let me just read the description for you. A 16-year-old aspiring painter who experiences his world in synesthetic hues of blues and reds, governed by the emotional turbulence of being a teenager. By the way, this is a really beautiful edition of the book, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about that, because I still have to do a book haul about this, but it's just a beautiful edition, even once you take the jacket off. 
just really pretty. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about that because again, I still have to haul this book in a video and it'll be nice that when I do, I have already read it. And the reason I bring up that part about synesthesia is this. I pulled up the definition of what synesthesia is because I don't want to just wing it and try to explain it myself. Not being someone who lives with that, I want to make sure I get it right. So synesthesia is when you hear music, but you see shapes or you hear a word or name and instantly see a color. Synesthesia is a fancy name for when you experience one of your senses through another. For example, you might hear the name Alex and see green, or you might read the word street and taste citrus fruit. So when it says that he experiences the world in reds and blues, I had a very specific idea of how that was going to play out. And the reality is the book doesn't actually do much of anything. It never even mentions that he might have synesthesia or that he sees the world through these colors. There will be things in passing, like the very opening of the book has him walking outside to go to school. And he says, today's morning sky is cerulean blue add a little white and oh no I'm gonna be late and he runs. So periodically throughout the book, book he will comment on things being a shade of blue but the book's not really doing anything with the idea of synesthesia. So if you are looking at a description of the book don't pick it up thinking that that's the part that's going to be really interesting. It is a really beautiful coming of age story and a coming out story. So this right here is now his childhood friend. People have kind of assumed that they have been dating. He decides that he's going to come out when he meets this man who runs a cafe near the high school. And he starts spending a lot of time and getting to know this man and hearing his story. He is living as an out gay man and determined not to live a life of secrets anymore. And that inspires Sora to begin the coming out process. And it's a really sweet book in that regard. There is a little detail of the end that I wasn't sure I liked, but it's not quite up at the level of My Brother's Husband, but I really did enjoy this book a lot and I would recommend it, especially if you are a fan of My Brother's Husband. It was a really good experience for that. The next book that I read was something I wanted to pick up because July is Disability Pride Month. It's Defutopia, a memoir and a love letter to a way of life by Niall DeMarco. There were a bunch of ways that I was thinking that I could read a book that would help me involve myself in Disability Pride Month, and this was one of them. It was available on Scribd, so I listened to an audio. It's a little weird to listen to a memoir of a deaf person by listening, but they did a really good job. They talk about how ASL is a language and it's different from English, so in parts where the person reading the audiobook is talking about dialogue that was would be sign language traditionally. He expresses it in the same grammar as ASL, and sometimes you repeat words in ASL for emphasis, so he would do that as well. And that was a really big part of the experience of this book. And it was a really interesting book. It did exactly what I wanted it to for Disability Pride Month. It was really interesting to immerse myself in the life of someone who grew up deaf in a deaf family. He, I believe, is the fourth generation of deaf people in his family. He, both of his parents and both of his brothers are also deaf. And just how they navigate the world and grew up not really believing that there was anything wrong with themselves, but also the way people have treated deaf people over time, the way they have been given poor access to education and information and access to things like hospitals. And it really is interesting putting yourself into that. And especially in light of uh, the fact that Joel and I watched Crip Camp, which is a documentary on Netflix that was produced by the Obamas. And that is about people who went to a camp for kids with disabilities who were inspired to advocate for equality, essentially. And that eventually led to the Americans with Disabilities Act, which was passed uh, while the first George Bush was president. And that was an interesting parallel to this because in one part of this book, he recalls how as he was getting ready to go out to college, his mother sat him down and told him, like, I want you to understand how the world is, what the world is like, and how the world will treat you. So she tells a story, and I can't remember if it was before he was born or when he was a very small child, but his grandfather, who is deaf, had 
a medical incident, they had to call an ambulance, and the mother and the grandmother were at the hospital, and they requested an interpreter, which should have been guaranteed to them based on law, but the hospital refused to provide one. So for days, they had no idea what was going on with the grandfather, who was taking the surgery, and they could not get any information because the hospital repeatedly refused to provide them with an interpreter. So... It did exactly what I wanted it to do. It is a good book. I will say it ends a little bit abruptly. If you are into America's Next Top Model, there is a little bit of gossip because it's interesting how he talks about the way episodes were framed and edited and what actually happened and what the actual arc of his story. He won season 22 or cycle 22 of America's Next Top Model. So that part is interesting. I wouldn't go into this book if that's what you're looking for because there's not that much. And he does talk about his time on Dancing with the Stars, which came immediately after that. He won that season as well. But there's even less gossip about Dancing with the Stars than there is about America's Next Top Model. So don't go in thinking you're going to be getting reality show gossip. Go in if you are interested in hearing about the life of someone who has been living as part of the deaf community and is proud of his status as part of the deaf community and uh, you want that story because that's exactly what this is that's exactly what I appreciated about this book and what I found so interesting when I finished Deaf Utopia I was trying to think about something quick and easy that I could do and I also was thinking about prompts for the Montana Book Company's reading challenge for 2022 and I took a look at the prompts that I have remaining. I'm about halfway through my reading challenge for this year. And given that the, we're about at the midpoint of the year, that means I'm in a good place. I will say some of the prompts that I have left are the ones that are going to be a little more difficult. So I need to make sure I pay attention to them in the last half of the year. But it should be easy enough. So one of the prompts was to read a book by an author that you read for last year's reading challenge. And if you are participating in Montana Book Company's reading challenge, I know there are a couple of you out there, and you didn't do it last year, you can read another book by an author that you read last year. So I looked through all of the books that I used for the prompts for last year's reading challenge, and there were a couple that jumped out to me as authors that I would be interested in doing another book for. And there were two of them that would be really easy. One of them was The Hawk's Way, Encounters with Fierce Beauty by Cy Montgomery. I have a, an audio copy of it on Libro, and it's maybe like a two, two and a half hour audiobook, so I knew it would be easy. So that is what I chose to do. It is just as interesting in many ways as The Soul of an Octopus, which was the book of Cy Montgomery's that I read last year, which had been recommended by Doris from Aldi Books because there was a prompt to read a science or nature book, and that's not usually my wheelhouse, so I asked Doris for advice. She recommended The Soul of an Octopus. I loved it. It was one of my favorite books of the year. So Cy Montgomery spends time with falconers and people in the bird community to get to know hawks, and she really gets to know the birds and the animals. She has a lot of empathy, not only for the people who work with these animals, but for the animals themselves, and that is palpable in the book. My only complaint is that it's really short. It feels a little too short. It's interesting. It's fascinating. But I wanted the same experience as The Soul of an Octopus, where she really spends a lot of time and goes into a lot of depth about the animals and caring for them and their lives and all of that stuff. And I get why you don't have that because she reaches a point in this, and this is again, like a two and a half hour audiobook, where in order to continue, she would have needed to become an apprentice with a falconer. And I, she has a job. She was probably working on the soul of an octopus during a lot of this period. So it would be really hard to embed yourself for the time and for the level of commitment that you would do for The Soul of an Octopus and get that full length book out of it. So I appreciate that you did this. I wanted the full experience, but it, you know, it felt a little bit slight when I wanted so much more, but it was still really interesting and I would still recommend it. And I'm glad that I did that. So that is everything that I finished this week. I had started Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, translated by Francis Riddle over the weekend and made a lot of progress in it. I got to about the halfway point 
Saturday and Sunday. So I was in really good shape to be done with this book by then, but then the work week got started and everything got busy and I have not made a whole lot of progress in it since then. I'm only a little more than halfway at this point. I'm hoping that this weekend I will be able to finish the book. I wanted to have it finished for, by today and yesterday I realized it just wasn't going to happen so I didn't put a push on it. I just kind of let it go and said, you know what, I'm, I'll revisit it this weekend. Don't want to stress myself out just to have something done. Really liking this so far. It is very sad. If you're unfamiliar, this was a finalist for the uh, Booker International this year. And it is about a woman named Elena who has Parkinson's. And uh, it kind of fits with Disability Pride Month. It was something I had been considering for it in my last Friday Reads. But I was kind of wondering, like, where is the line between chronic illness and disability? And a couple of people pointed out that in this case, it is a chronic illness that causes disability. So it counts for disability pride. So she has Parkinson's and has relied on her daughter a lot in the past. Her daughter has died. Her body was found in a bell tower uh, at a church. Everybody seems to assume that it was suicide. She does not think it is. So she is on a journey. She leaves the house. She has to carefully medicate herself and time her medication so that she can actually move around. So she can try to have this last ditch attempt to get out and advocate for her daughter and try to prove that something happened to her. It is a very difficult book from that. And maybe since I've been thinking about Guinness a lot this week, it, maybe that's part of why I have created a bit of a distance from this book over the week. Since the weekend, I do still want to finish it. It is a very good book, but I, I can see why today, when I've really been grappling with all the feelings, uh, why I have not been so eager to pick it up the last few days. But I'm really looking forward to finishing it. I think it's a great book. It is something that would be well worth your time. If you are in an emotional state, to get through all of that stuff. So hopefully I will be done with this this weekend and I will talk to you some more about it in my next Friday Reads video. Once I finished Hawk's Way, I took a day off from audiobooks and caught up on some podcasts and yesterday dipped a toe back into the world of audio. I selected The Candy House by Jennifer Egan as my next audiobook. And I had been thinking that I was gonna hold off on it until I reread A Visit from the Goon Squad, and then I just decided to do it. I just said, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna dive in. I have not gotten far into it. I'm still, I think, toward the end of the first chapter. And it seems really interesting. It's been doing a lot of setup. The writing is great, but I'm not far enough in to really express an opinion, but I did want to mention that I started this book because I did, and I am looking forward to getting further into it. Maybe once I finish it, I will reread A Visit from the Goon Squad and maybe do a Pulitzer Prize deep dive on that. I would like a different book to be my next Pulitzer one, but I think because this is so topical right now since The Candy House has been released, I might just do it that way. So I will leave it at that for now. And uh, just say that is what I managed to read this week and what I am continuing to work on. I apologize that this is a short video, but like I said, I just really did not feel at all like doing a video today. So it is what it is. Thank you if you have made it to this point. I appreciate your time always, always, always. It really does mean a lot. Uh, this is a very great community and I'm glad to be part of it. And everybody has been very supportive. Um, when I've had a tough month um, with everything going on. And I will leave it at that. Again, I really appreciate you and the time that you spend watching any of my videos uh, and leaving comments and all of that. Uh, I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.